When Mount St. Helens erupted on May 18, 1980, people in Spokane said, thank goodness we're 290 miles away from that disaster. And then, a few hours later, they turned their eyes to the west and they saw something dark, ugly, and ominous, a giant black cloud filling the horizon, and it was headed right toward them. The cloud turned afternoon to midnight and began snowing, but not flakes, fine gritty particles of ash blown aloft by the distant volcano and carried on the wind. Soon up to an inch of the stuff turned Spokane gray. To the west and south, it was far worse. Yakima was buried. Ritzville was blanketed with four to six inches, and Moses Lake, a resident, reported, there's no sun or moon. Once the ash hit the ground, it refused to stay put. A passing car, a passing truck, even a footfall, caused it to billow up again in a choking cloud. The afternoon air show at Fairchild Air Force Base was abruptly canceled, but many of the expected 60,000 spectators now had no way to get home. Driving in Spokane was already treacherous, but for those who had arrived from the west or south for their Lilac Festival weekend, it was impossible. Interstate 90 was closed from Spokane all the way to North Bend, on the far side of the Cascades. A driver could escape only to the east, and even that was treacherous. Cars died as soon as the air filter got clogged, grit burned out engines. And when the ash got wet, it turned as slippery as slush. That night, jazz legend Dizzy Gillespie called his wife from Spokane and said, I was canceled by a volcano. His Spokane Opera House concert had been called off, and like thousands of other travelers, Gillespie was stuck. All flights were canceled out of Spokane. Gillespie's fans, however, found a way to compensate. They thronged the disco at the Spokane Sheraton and threw what they called a volcano party. Yet it was already obvious. There was nothing to celebrate. Ash had to be laboriously scooped up, carted away, and dumped, and most of the dump trucks were dead, stranded on the side of the road. Meanwhile, real fear and panic had set in. Rumors spread about killer ash. It was not toxic, but it was certainly stifling. People were afraid to open their doors for even a few seconds. Residents were warned not to venture out without a face mask. All schools and most businesses were closed. In Ritzville, life was even grittier. About 2,500 motorists were stranded in this town of less than 2,000. Travelers filled every motel, every school gym, every church, every public space. They were even camped out in the corridors of the hospital. Food and tempers were running short. On Tuesday, about 100 stranded motorists in Ritzville revolted. They defied the state patrol and started west on I-90 in a dusty caravan. Most cars died within a few miles. The rest made it to the Shrag rest area where they had to be rescued by the state patrol. After about three days, it became clear that the ash was not dangerous, but it was heavy and nasty. People brought out their brooms and shovels. Officials asked residents to hose down the streets and sidewalks around their homes. The sewer system soon clogged. Scientists said the ash was not toxic to crops, but that was little consolation to farmers who were soberly standing over acres of gray without a hint of green creeping through. By Wednesday, life was beginning to return to normal. The taverns even started to open up. A golf course or two reopened, but schools and most major businesses remained closed. The city council passed an ordinance requiring people to remove the stuff within 10 days. Rain helped sluice away tons of ash, but it also sparked telephone pole fires and power outages when wet ash conducted electricity around insulators. On Thursday, Spokane had a surprise visitor, President Jimmy Carter. He flew into Spokane and landed, in a cloud of dust, for an hour-long meeting with local officials. Spokane Mayor Ron Baer, still wearing the safari suit he wore during the cleanup, moderated the briefing. Carter promised federal help. By that time, four days after the deluge, Spokane was mostly back in business. Auto parts stores and vacuum cleaner stores were doing particularly well. Most of the stranded travelers were trickling out. In Ritzville, Moses Lake, and Yakima, the cleanup took far longer. People were still shoveling ash out of Ritzville alleys in August. However, the most dire predictions did not come true. The ash did not hurt crops as much as feared, and wheat did especially well that year. Today, 30 years later, you can still find a gray line of ash in the region's wheat fields. And Mount St. Helens, the half that remains, slumbers quietly 290 miles away. This is Jim Kirshner for Spokesman.com.